Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Nerdy Affair, where we take your favorite pop culture things and then take them on a nice blind date with our favorite concept, or, or rather, our favorite hobby, tabletop role-playing games. I'm Cody. And I'm uncomfortable. Hi, no, it's, are... it's, it's, I'm Joe. Um, <sighs> I, did, I tried. We're taking him on a blind date, you said? Yeah, a blind date, you know. Like, so, like a blind Zoom call more than anything else, I guess. Well, yeah, n- nowadays, blind Zoom call, yeah. Yeah, uh. A little, okay. a little topical humor there for you. <laughs> 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 how how are you been, Cody? I have been well. How have you been? Oh, I've been I've been fantastic. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been reading some comic comics books. Nice. Any yeah. anything uh, in particular that you're really jazzed about? I started uh, the. The run of uh, James, I believe it's pronounced Tinian or Tinian, the fourth uh, run of um, Detective Comics. Okay. Which is, I guess, unique in that it is um, basically every every arc, uh, it features like a second Batman and a secondary Bat character. And so it's like a comic about the Bat family versus just like, this is a Batman comic featuring, you know, Batgirl. Like, this one is, like, we're all a team and we're all working together and some arcs, like, feature this character and some arcs feature this character. And, sure. like, I guess it will shift from, like, a kind of, like, cool, slick spy fl- spy thriller to, like, kind of, like, a weird, like, you know, uh, what's-his-face, like, like a weird... um. Lovecraft, a weird like Lovecraftian like horror fantasy, and so uh, it's something that came recommended to me, and I'm excited to to check it out. So nice. You up to anything nerdy? You yeah, nerdy? I, I mean always, but I have finished the Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh yeah, and I'm jumping from one long RPG into another, and I'm going to be playing Persona Five Royale. Ooh. Yeah, I. Played the first two and a half hours on stream on Monday. Very nice. And then, unfortunately, it wasn't done downloading, um, so I switched over to Animal Crossing. But uh, it, it's been it's been good so far, and I'm excited to continue to play. Great. Sounds fun. Yeah. So, before we get into the meat of this episode, yeah. do, oh. do you see that over there? Oh, I see it. Yeah, it's... off in the distance, there's people waving at us with their swords and wands and shit. Yeah, it looks like it's a party of adventurers. Yeah. Hey guys, so... welcome to you and a party of adventurers, or team of adventurers, or whatever we call it. Yeah, you and a group of adventurers, we're close. I was like, those were synonyms. If you went to, like, thesaurus.com... Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the, thesaur- the thesaurus would be like, no, Joe's... No, no, Joe's it's totally good. fine. We, we haven't been doing this forever. What if we have, though? <laughs> it's going to be embarrassing in, like, two years when I'm still getting the name. Right? Out. Yeah, like, three years from now, and it's, like, a huge thing, and, like, a bunch of people are in on it, and then all of a sudden it's, like, uh, me and a conglomerate of good doers. Damn it! Ah. Me and me and my shadow. Um, little classic, uh, little classic, um, uh... Uh, uh, musical theater reference for uh, nice those people out there. Man, I did. My I did, brain I is did not working that. great tonight. <laughs> Why don't you tell us uh, your you and a group of adventures from last time, well, and I will give pleasure. you my answer. It'd be my pleasure, Cody. So um, the phrasing of this uh, was: you and a team of adventurers try to get your leader home by going deep cover to plant an important idea. And it took me a second, but I'm going to go with what my gut was. Uh, Inception. Ding, 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 ding. Yes! Yeah, I I was thrown off a little bit at some of the verbiage, but I think ultimately, I I just, I had a feeling that that's what it was. I couldn't think of another, like, spy drama where, like, somebody was, like, incepted or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the interesting thing about the inception as like a a concept or as like a film or what have you um is the fact that it's like 
if you look at it from a stakes perspective, like if you were to explain the plot to someone, it literally is planting an idea. Yeah. Um, which isn't necessarily, you know, like the most fascinating thing in the entire world, but it's a good, it's a good flick. So, yeah. So I got one for you. Yes. And didn't just come up with it mere minutes before the show started. Can't you didn't confirm. see, you didn't see that. So, you and a group of adventurers must sneak into a magic organization to get revenge you rightfully deserve. Okay. It is a television show. Okay, hit me one more time with it. You and a group of adventurers must sneak into a magic organization to get revenge you rightfully deserve. You rightfully deserve. All right. Well, I'm going to think on this one um, until the next time we we gather together in this, our our uh, our blind Zoom call date space. Yeah. Uh, our date is looking at us very confused right now. I know. First off, they're like, why is there two people here? This was not in the this was not in the um, this the, wasn't in the Tinder app, the Tinder app. <laughs> and now they're and now they're just talking to each other about no yeah uh but if you have an idea if you have a guess uh please tweet at us your thoughts or your answers at uh, uh fandom r underscore podcast um and we will get you the answer next time so all right yeah bye party of adventurers see ya okay um oh man that was really nice they played us they played us like a delightful little tune um yeah to set and, the mood for this blind date thing yeah and the uh barbarian didn't snap me in half this time so that was a nice change of pace yeah wow every time you get snapped in half i know every time it's get the what the medical it? bills through the roof what is it with that guy ha huh, topical uh, um, uh anyway God, this is such a bad bit i'm sorry <laughs> no i like i just like saying topical i think it's a funny thing to say um even when it's accurate yeah um so today yeah. on nerdy affair Ooh. we're gonna get into uh some dungeons and dragons fifth edition shenanigans with sherlock holmes oh in indubitably mm, elementary my dear watson which i found out is not an actual thing that he says ever. Yeah, not in um, not in uh, not in any of the short stories written. By yeah, Sarah it's like a Dora, thing that happened but... in a play. It certainly happened in an adaptation. It probably was yeah. a play. Um, yeah, I, I remember reading that in like the Did you know? While I was scouring the internet, because fun fact, my Sherlock Holmes uh, repertoire is limited to the first Robert Downey Jr. movie and then the series with Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, Blueberry Pumpkin Patch? Yes. Okay. Bless Just make you. sure we're talking about the same guy, so. Yeah, yeah. So, I had to do a lot of research on this one, but I think 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons is a really good fit for this, for a lot of different things, and I think, mechanically, there isn't a whole lot to tweak Okay. But I do think there's kind of like a bunch of like things you'll need to do ahead of time to be like, all right, here's your Sherlock Holmes. So uh, do you want to do you want to start this bad boy or do you want me to start it? Why don't you why don't you go ahead? Get the get this right. ball rolling. So my first big point is that you're going to be running a murder mystery. But at the end of the day, that is like. Nine times out of ten, Sherlock Holmes is solving a very elaborate murder mystery. You know, who did it, how they did it, why, and a lot of this will be a huge build for you. Like, this is a lot of, not necessarily world building, but more like encounter building on a bigger scale. And uh, and right off the bat, in my opinion, two things that need to be apparent to the party who will be investigating this is, why is it that they're the only ones who can do this? And why should they care? Got it. Um, I'm all about immersion. And those two things to me are kind of like the big ones that would like 
break it. Like if you're putting this in like uh, Neverwinter, how come a level, a group of level one snobs are doing this while there are like grand wizards literally a town over? So sure. you'll have to kind of think about, you might have to do a little bit of world building there to make sure that the players are kind of at the center because for at least in my experience with Sherlock Holmes, he's kind of larger than life. He is the center of attention. So by design, the players should be the same. Um, I guess th that being said, um, I would probably start them off at like level three. Yeah, I would agree with that. In a town that maybe at best has like guards and maybe like a guard master or something. Something very like low level, right? Like it, this can't be. And if we're going to put this in Dungeons and Dragons terms, like this can't be a huge city, right? This can't be. Uh, water deep or something like that because that doesn't really like fit here now you could do a big town but like the guard system and like like you those characters have to be like the best of the best for this city so i think first and foremost in this murder mystery like those should like besides actually building a murder mystery which could be its own literal episode those are, like, the first, like, big things that, like, stand out to me for, like, a Sherlock Holmes-like experience. Cool. What about you? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so, okay, so here's a, a thing that I find personally fascinating about uh, Sherlock Holmes. Um, yeah. Which is something that you kind of touched upon in the whole, like, elementary My Dear Watson thing, um, is that uh, there have been uh, quite a lot of adaptations of Sherlock Holmes. Um, that, yes. f that focus in on uh, various aspects and facets of his personality. But I feel like for the majority of us as people, um, most people associate um, th the character Sherlock Holmes with like the Basil Rathbone, like tall, thin, kind of prim and proper uh, British gentleman archetype. Whereas, like, and so because of this, people, like, kind of rejected that Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes because he was, like, this bare-knuckle boxer. But, like, if you read the stories, like, he is, like, he invents his own fighting style because he finds all other fighting styles, like, too boring for him. So he has to find one that will, like, highlight how unconventional of, like, a person he is. Things like that. Um, so, like... My my first idea is, or my first thought was, you know, Sherlock Holmes is 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 very often a solo act, and so what is something that you can do to kind of like enhance it and make it more of a party feel? Which is to say, like I would say that you should have different builds of Sherlock Holmes for your players. Um, so someone like uh, the Cumberbatch, Sher Cumberbatch Sherlock Holmes, he is incredibly high intelligence and low charisma. Um, maybe Robert Downey Jr. has more emphasis on like strength and athletics things, um, than uh, say like you know, so like having different facets of the different Sherlock Holmeses to to achieve various things to kind of you know address this party of like a quote unquote spotlight issue. So it's like yeah. maybe one of your Sherlock Holmeses is, you know, like, maybe one of them is a bit more on the, like, higher intelligence. Like, they're all going to be smart, but one might be a little bit better at intelligence, one might be a little bit better at fighting and things like that. And so it's various interpretations of the character, but um, giving them other um, facets and uh, giving them other facets to explore to make it kind of have a party dynamic, except it would just be a team of Sherlock Holmeses, so... Yeah, and I want to add on to that because I also agree that Sherlock was, like, practically borderline a demigod by the way he's written. Yeah. Um, so the idea that I had um, is that every... Because Sherlock is so incredible in so many different ways, to enhance that effect, having special Sherlock abilities that everyone can kind of pick from a pool to, like, better enhance that thing. Like, for instance, uh, his uncanny deduction. Like, yeah. 
maybe somebody in the party gets this ability to where someone gains additional information with investigation checks. Um, forensic science, you roll with advantage when using anything picked up at a crime scene to gain additional information, uh, to, for combat, um, because he was said to be like basically above average, maybe giving him, uh, basically the equivalent of monk like fist strikes, mm -hmm. like being able, like, or the equivalent of, uh, I forget what the feat is at the moment, but the one where you can use anything as a weapon. Um, I think it's like bar fighter or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then also he's like, like a master of disguises. So like even having an ability to roll advantage when deceiving someone, when you're in a disguise, like m make sure you have like a, like almost like a pool of these and like put them in like a pile and everyone can like pick one so that everyone can kind of, play a different part of this superhero like character. Yeah. Um, that way everyone kind of gets a spotlight. Um, but yeah, like I wanted to add on that cause that was one of the things that I thought of, like maybe give them a feat that makes sense for like the, whatever Sherlock ability you want to highlight. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so go ahead. And then I also wanted to bring up, because this is going to be a murder mystery, um, I would, I would be, uh, I would be silly not to bring up my thoughts on clues okay. during a murder mystery. Uh, these can be semi-difficult to run, um, but I always like the rule of three when dealing with clues. Um, if you're leaving clues out for the party to gather so that they can put the pieces together... Unlike a show, there's a chance to fail. Sure. Right? In most TV shows, like, the protagonists, they just gain the information that they need. Like, that's how the story progresses. If you don't give them the clues, they'll never have the clues. And if they don't have the clues, they can't figure out who the murderer was. And then it just kind of leads into that stalling of, like, well, I don't really know what to do. What I suggest is that you when when giving out clues or when um when putting them behind skill checks or you know puzzles or things like that rule of 3 make sure that if you have a clue there are three or even perhaps more ways to unlock that clue um especially if this is a one shot and you're expected to like get all this done in 2 to 4 hours like it's got to be lightning quick uh, you can't be like, oh, well, you failed your investigation check, so you don't get this clue. Y you have to find ways to, like, help out with that thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my next thing is is kind of along the lines of clues as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is uh, One of the things that I think kind of makes Sherlock Holmes unique is um, a mind palace. The mind palace. Yeah. Um, which has been interpreted by different people in different ways, but mainly like boiling it down. It is his ability to kind of like compartmentalize information and his ability to um, do things along those, you know, those things along those lines. Um, so I thought that it would be kind of interesting to play around with the mind palace um, to break up some aspects of the mystery of the session. Uh, so it's like, you know, uh, maybe going into, um, like, uh, these could act as puzzles. They could act as flashbacks to earlier cases. Um, it, it basically gives a mechanic to um, accessing earlier information from other cases that you can use to infer what's going on in this particular case. Um, not 100% sure how it would work yet. Like, you know, maybe it, it would be like those group skill checks that um, that work out really nicely or things along those lines. But just a just adding maybe a certain level of challenge to gaining certain aspects of information. And that could be how one interprets the like mind palace Enos of the Holmes character, because I think. That's something that's unique and would be something to be see be interesting to see in play. So, I agree, and I think I might have an idea. Okay, I was thinking about it. I didn't write it down, but like now that I'm thinking about it, so yeah, okay. let's riff. 
So you want people to be able to like gain clues and uh, kind of figure out the, you know, in the mind palace or whatever, figure out how these clues connect, right? So what you do is in my head, the clues would be like each clue would have like a like a word like maybe it's the bloody footprint or you know the murder weapon is broken in half like you know these kind of baseline subject matters and you cut them up into strips of paper right and so you give that clue to them when they learn that clue and anytime they use their mind palace they'll make a check you know maybe it's an intelligence check investigation but if they roll high enough you can go up to their set of clues and put two of the clues together to give them a hint as to, like, where they should probably investigate next. Sure. Without necessarily being like, you know how this whole thing works, but giving them a lead on this. And maybe they can only do it so often, or, you know, maybe this is a one-shot. Maybe the players, each player can only do this once, right? Yeah. So I think that might be a cool and clever way to give them a way to move forward, but also like tie it into like, Oh, uh, how does, how does he go around and like figure out where to go next with that? Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, granted this is off the cuff, but uh, I think that could work as well. Yeah. Agreed. And then I have one last thing. Yes. And I think it's important Granted, this isn't, like, mechanically any different from 5e, but I think it's just important for the whole Sherlock thing. You need the mastermind. You need the Moriarty, if you will. Um, I will. (laughs) You need someone who is as clever, or if not more clever than the party, who is behind the scenes. It's like, if this is a one-shot, like, they're finding Moriarty, right? Um, But maybe if you're doing this in a kind of a campaign style, you know... Each investigation ends on the, oh, it's revealed that, you know, whoever this Moriarty character is was actually behind it. And he hired that person to kill them. And you're slowly gaining more clues to build up to find the Moriarty individual. Um, You may never, like, it should be very difficult to capture them. Like, maybe they don't even get to him in, like, the one shot or whatever. But I think it's important that behind all of this, there is that character. Because I think that also is what makes Sherlock Sherlock, is that he's fighting somebody who's at his level of intellect. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Uh, I had sort of a similar idea. um, Yeah, yeah. And I think that it'd be kind of cool, too, to let the sort of setting, the the various levels of mystery play into that to a certain degree so it's like maybe you're more likely to get um information about the mastermind in like a a um like more working class neighborhood or something versus where it's like an arist like an aristocracy uh or like upper class um mystery won't give you the same like level of information because maybe there's a little bit of coercion or embarrassment there whereas like a person living in like Whitechapel, for instance, would be like, Hey, I, I don't got nothing to lose by, by revealing information about this guy. Whereas like a prim and proper person might be embarrassed that they were able to like, you know, take advantage of this, you know, this thing that they're embarrassed about or something like that. Um, and then yeah, I that have, sounds rad. I have one last one as well. Absolutely. Hit me um, up. So I think this is another thing that people sometimes forget about when it comes to Sherlock Holmes which is the fact that um, Sherlock Holmes, uh, as I've mentioned before, is 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 something of a of a crazy person, um, in the sense that like he invents his own form of, of fighting and all of this stuff. But the one thing too is that he is an opium addict, um, and I think it would be kind of interesting uh, if your character were to have sort of like a vice calculator or a vice tracker or something where it's like you choose your particular character's vice and you periodically have to pass a, um, like a wisdom or an intelligence or, or what insert check as you see fit to, um, prevent yourself from having to, 
achieve this vice, but also keeping tabs of it because if you go too far one way or the other, like um, it might have some pretty dire consequences for your character. So I think that that is an important aspect of the Sherlock Holmes character is the fact that he's like so hyper intelligent, so like I'm the best that there ever was that like he needs to, you know, he does things that are reckless and irresponsible um, and has a, a fair number of vices as well. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, like. uh, Blades in the Dark has a good system for that. So if you're looking for something in particular, I would go check out Blades in the Dark. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Any uh, any final thoughts about Sherlock Holmes, Cody? I mean, those are my three main thoughts, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I jumped around a bit, but those were also my thoughts. Um, we, like I said, um, maybe in the future we'll talk about actually building a murder mystery. Maybe it's yeah. a topic we t- tackle on Loremaster Investigation. But in the end, I think 5e is a really good fit. Like, we don't have to do a whole lot of tweaking. Uh, it's more of like world building and encounter building and building a mystery. Um I think this is a cool campaign idea. Uh, and it's also a great one shot like thing. Like if you're just, if you just want to do this one night where, uh, you know, there's a murder that takes place and you got to solve it. Like it's clue on clue on fucking ecstasy, right? Like it's, it's going to be a really cool experience either way. I think. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and I, th- I think it's one of those things where it's like, Sherlock Holmes is kind of a tricky nut to crack um, yeah. for a group dynamic. Um, but I think with, with some with some tweaking, it's certainly something you can pull off um, if, if, you, if, you, if you get creative with some of the aspects of, of how Sherlock Holmes works and how a party works. So Yeah, it's also worth mentioning that, I mean, this also goes into the idea of like, making sure that everybody's in the spotlight and like you might be able to achieve that just by having everybody pick a different D and D five E class yeah. um, with like very little overlap so that like th- it's kind of necessary for everybody to be in the spotlight. Cause like some people need to use magic. Some people need to be, you know, uh, tricky and uh, use guile. Some people may just need to break down the door and Uh, Just being aware of, like, the quote-unquote spotlight for your players is a good way to, like, make everybody feel like they are themselves Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Hey, Cody, uh, if people liked this episode, if they wanted to hear more about who we are, what we do, all of that good stuff, or they wanted to pitch something that they enjoyed to see how we would tweak it into a D and d or role-playing game, uh, where's some places they could go to get that information? Boy, howdy, the nexus of that question is our website, www.fandomroulette.com. That is where you can go down to the very bottom. There's a little area where you can fill out your internet tag and basically anything you want us to tackle in the nerdy affair, whether it's a book series, comic books, video games, what have you. We'd love to we'd love to hear what you guys want to hear, and we'd love to tackle those different... Uh, those different topics. Uh, yeah, so you can do that at our website. You can also find all of our episodes there for all the various shows that we do here on Fandom Roulette, uh, the Fandom Roulette podcast, uh, Lore Master Investigation, The One Shot, Worldsmith- Worldsmithing, all those shows you can find on our website. And yeah. if you're looking to hit us up on the social media, uh, if you don't want to go to the bottom of the website for our social media uh links you can go on twitter and tweet at us at fandom r underscore podcast that is our twitter handle uh we're also on facebook and instagram if you search fandom roulette and uh if you're looking to share this with your friends and family and whatever uh we are on soundcloud itunes google play spotify rss feed catchers if you can think of it, youtube that's the one i forgot we're on youtube uh so yeah. feel free to check us out yeah do those things and thank um, you so much for listening and uh hanging out with us we enjoy doing this for you and we hope you are enjoying our uh tackling into these uh tabletop role-playing game uh concepts creative exercises if you will yeah uh and um 
Please remember to rate, review, subscribe. If you already said that, I don't care. Do it because it's important and we love you. Um, yeah. And uh, thank you for listening to this episode of The Nerdy Affair. Signing off for Phantom Roulette, this is Joe. And I'm Cody. And as always, stay nerdy. Stay super nerdy. Nerdy.